I grew up in the most ultra-Orthodox neighborhood in Yerushalayim. I learned in Beis Yaakov, Beis Yaakov and Geula, the most uh, ultra-Orthodox Haredi school in Jerusalem. On July 24th, 2014, when Reuven Rivlin was sworn in as the 10th president of Israel, he appointed Rivka Ravitz as his chief of staff. How does someone who grew up in one of the most Haredi neighborhoods in Israel, Matazdarf, was one of 10 children at home, and now she herself was a mother of 12, how does she become the chief of staff to the president of Israel? Well, when Rivka was 18 years old, she married Yitzchak Ravitz, who was the son of then Knesset member Avram Ravitz. I was still a student, I was still learning, and he offered me to come and work with him at the afternoons after school. I took the offer and started working at the Knesset at the age of 18 and a half. Two years later, he had to let her go because the government passed a law that didn't allow for Knesset members or high-level government officials to hire relatives. When he let her go, Reuven Rivlin, who was also a Knesset member at the time, hired her in his office. For six years, he was uh, appointed to be the Speaker of the Israeli Parliament. I was his Chief of uh, Staff then. Along those years, there were a lot of elections, primaries, and I ran uh, all of them, also gained the money for them, also was uh, responsible uh, for those campaigns. And then came the most important campaign in his life and probably also in my life. He wanted to be the Israeli president. We worked very hard for a year long, but he won it and he became the Israeli president and he asked me which job would I like to take in the office and I chose to be his chief of staff. For the next seven years, she was planning, arranging, and traveling with the President of Israel to all the different countries, meeting the most powerful leaders around the world, kings, queens, presidents, and prime ministers. If you would have to count on fingers five of the most important leaders of the world, I'm sure I met them. Putin, Merkel, Obama, Trump, Biden. In November of 2015, Rivka was planning one of the most important meetings of President Rivlin they were preparing to meet the Pope in the Vatican. The government in Israel attached tremendous importance to this meeting with the Pope because uh, the Vatican had massive influence on our bilateral relationships, especially on our relations with the Palestinians. It was extremely important that when Reuven Rivlin and his staff and his entire delegation were meeting the Pope, that they make a good first impression. We had maybe a dozen of meetings in Israel preparing us. The ambassador came in, the minister of foreign affairs, even the prime minister came in to meet the president before his first time meeting with uh, the Pope. And they kept rehearsing it in their minds making sure they know exactly what to expect and how to act, how to behave, so that everything runs smoothly. And we traveled to Rome, we got to the hotel, we had another meeting now with the special ambassador to the Vatican, because there are two countries, separate countries. They basically mapped out the palace. They told them, as you pull up to the palace, certain cardinals will be outside greeting you. They'll take you into the palace, you'll go down a staircase, you walk through a hallway with many different chambers. When you get to the end of the hallway, you'll walk into a different hallway. When you get to the end of that hallway, you'll enter a room and you'll wait there. The cardinals will leave and then the Pope will enter through a side door. When the door will be open and we'll see the Pope, we should stand in a line and come into the room one after each other. Everyone should shake a hand to the Pope, bow to him, and we will get a small present from his hands. As soon as Rivka heard that the Pope will be shaking everyone's hand, she said, hold on one second. I'm an Orthodox woman. I don't shake hands with men. The ambassador said, you know, if you don't shake hands, just take a bow. Usually I do, I could, but this specific time I can't because the Pope will be wearing a necklace of a cross and a Jew can't bow to a cross. No problem, the ambassador said, I will let the Cardinals know and they will let the Pope know that you can't shake his hand. The big day finally arrives, and they're picked up with their limos, and they get in, and she's in the car next to the president, and the ambassador is with them, and she turns to the ambassador, and she's so nervous, and she says, did you deliver the message to the Pope? <gasps> oh, he said, Rivka, I'm so sorry. I really forgot. I had such a hectic day, and I forgot. Well, I got stressed. Her heart was racing. Her palms were sweating. She felt aches all over her body. She was so nervous and anxious. And yet she said, in all my life, I haven't shaken the hands of another man other than my husband. I can't do that. 
please, is there anything you can do? The ambassador said to her, look, right now we're in the car on the way to the palace. There's no way I can deliver the message on time. Please understand, Rivka, the weight that rests on your shoulders to make a good first impression as part of the delegation that represents the state of Israel. He said, Rivka, listen, I'm sure if you will call your rabbi, he would let you shake hands with me just this time because it's such an important meeting. But that was not what I wanted to do. And I just went with them into the cars. She knew this was not negotiable. She wasn't going to violate her terms. And all she could do was pray. They pulled up to the palace. The entire delegation got out. Cardinals were waiting for them, ushered them in. And as the ambassadors mapped them out, they got into the palace, walked down the staircase, walked through the chambers, the hallway, and finally got to the room where they waited for the Pope to come in. We saw the big door and I was really shivering and uh, nervous. And then the door opened and the Pope was there. I was standing at the second place the president was first. He went in, he shaked his hand, he bowed to him, he got his present. And then my turn came and I was really so stressed. I was sure I'm going to ruin all this meeting and all the Israelis will be so mad at me. Rivka thought she wouldn't be able to live through the moment. She was so nervous. And as the Pope started shaking everybody's hands, he came to her. The Pope put out his hand and tried to shake my hand. And I start to explain that I can't do that. I'm religious, I'm ultra-Orthodox, and the president was standing next to me and he was telling him about my father-in-law that was the head of the ultra-Orthodox party in the Knesset. And the Pope, even though he couldn't understand the language, he had an interpreter, but he was able to sense the strength and the courage of Rivka Ravitz. And to honor her, the Pope took a bow to her. He himself bowed as he gave me the souvenir. And that moment, was memorialized in a photo that went completely viral around the world. The Pope bowing to an Orthodox woman who stood proud and tall of her values. When I came back to Israel, I got hundreds of phone calls. Is that true? What happened? When Rivka was interviewed by so many different journalists and news media outlets, she kept repeating the same line. I think he bowed to me, not because my name is Rivka, not because of me being a chief of staff to a president. He was bowing towards me because he honored the fact that I stood up for my values. Through all those years, I had the honor to meet three of the American presidents. Obama, Trump, and Biden. On her last visit with Rivlin to the White House, she still remembers being ushered into the Roosevelt Room. According to protocol, President Rivlin was supposed to go first by himself into the Oval Room. Fifteen minutes afterwards, the staff would be coming in and accompanying the rest of the professional meeting. So Rivlin turned to Rivka Ravitz and said to her, look, it's our last visit. How would you like to join me alone with the President of the United States in the Oval Office? And Rivka Ravitz said, yes, I'd love to. A few minutes later, President Biden walks into the Roosevelt Room and ushers Rivlin into the Oval Office. And Rivlin motions to Rivka Ravitz to come along with him. And in the Oval Office, President Rivlin introduced Rivka Ravitz. So President Biden came to shake my hand. So I took my hands back and President Rivlin explained to him, she can't shake hands. She comes from a very religious community in Israel. And guess how many children she has. So President Biden said, how many? And he said, she's a mother to 12 children. Wow, he said, my mother should know you. If she would know, I'm meeting with a woman that has 12 children, she would admire you. And right away, Biden got on his knees and said, I need to honor you. And you can sense the reverence and the awe he had for Rivka Ravitz simply because she was a mother of 12 children. In these modern days, the value of family is not such valuable. And here comes the president, one of the most influential leaders of the world, and still admire a value as a value of family. To live proudly as a Jew. Every time I felt compelled to stand up for my values and beliefs, I was treated to respect and understanding. A great deal of respect and a great deal of understanding.